Well, I think we have no choice except to begin with culture, because culture is about people's attitudes, their values, and their beliefs. And there can't be any government or any business who would not be interested in what motivates people. And in particular, there's a problem about how people change, how they respond to change, how they respond to challenge. And this is really the problem of uncertainty, because uncertainty isn't risk. Risk is something that can be calibrated, it can be thought about, it can be quantified it can be mitigated. But uncertainty is something that proliferates, it's constitutive of social relations, of the way in which governments work, individuals respond to government, of the way in which businesses operate. It's an environment which you can't quantify or mitigate. You have to negotiate it. And what culture is about is the way in which people use social attitudes, their beliefs, their behaviours to navigate those uncertain terrains, to work out what they should be doing and why. Now one of the problems with this is that when people navigate through a cultural terrain like that, they tend to walk down the paths they've already taken. They tend to trek across the mountains, if you like, in the way that they've always done. And some of that is problematic. It provides a certain comfort, if you like, a way of operating. It makes the world look a bit more certain and feel a bit more certain. But as others around them are changing, taking the same well-worn paths can actually be something that increases uncertainty and in the worst cases can actually lead to violence and conflict. Well, I think all sectors of business have to be interested in how people navigate uncertainty. And the reason is because businesses are only ever as good as the people they employ. And the younger generation, the generation that's coming, that generation is changing its ideas. It's not necessarily wanting to have a job that just gives you lots of money or have a job that gives you lots of status. What it's interested in is working in a way that makes a difference, having a job where people are committed to sustainability, to resilience in the environment and in social relations. And so businesses are going to have to respond to the way young people are beginning to think about the kinds of uncertainties they face and the kind of world that they're inheriting from the generation above them. And so I think any business who doesn't respond to that is actually in danger of a failure of their business model. I think the model for business is going to have to change dramatically in the next 10, 20, 30 years. The difficulty is we can't quite see in what direction that change is going to be taking business at the moment. So I think all businesses want to know the emerging trends, those things that will be important in the coming years for defining business models. And we're not quite sure what they are with this generation who are now, for example, between the ages of 16 and 24. We know that they're disenchanted with governments. We know that they're interested in the environment. We can actually see interesting trends emerging, especially in Europe, where people in that generation tend, for example, not to drive, whereas driving in earlier generations was an indication of autonomy and freedom. So there are different ideas emerging, and we don't know what that generation will be doing as when they become employees, when they become consumers who are making choices. But I think we need to begin now thinking about the cultural drivers that are important for them, the way that they think, the way that they imaginatively engage with the uncertainty that they perceive around them, and how they think they're going to d develop their lives and live out their lives, because I think the situation we're in now is people entering the um, job market now in their early 20s. They are going to be the people who are going to be actually employed at the moment when we hit the crisis that climate change is going to bring, which is going to be post-2030. So how they're going to respond is, is, I think, extremely important. I think there are geographical differences all around the world that need to be taken account of. And this, is, again, is why we, we return to the question of culture, to what shapes people's attitudes and aspirations. I think one of the things we have to understand is that in many parts of the world, particularly China and India, we have a growing middle class. And that growing middle class is saying, we want to consume the things that people in other parts of the world have had for a very long time. And so there's going to be no real purchase there in arguing for a kind of restriction on consumption. Whereas in Europe and so on, other places, America and so on, you're in a situation where young people are beginning to think about the fact that they will have to change their consumption choices. They will have to do things differently, have to manage their lives differently.